Hi folks, welcome to Barb Makes Things. Today, I'd like to tell you about my hexachord. Barb Makes Things! This is the story of how I designed and built this big old musical instrument. This video will be a little different from my usual ones because I made the hexachord before I started this channel and before I started filming the whole of my build processes. I do have lots of pictures though. I'm a musician. I played piano and flute growing up. I studied performance and composition and electronic music in college. I played bass guitar and ukulele. I've made instruments like panpipes and ocarinas and talking drums and a hammered dulcimer and yeah, I use my ears a lot. So when I wound up as a maker in residence at an Intel Experience pop-up store back in 2014, using e-waste to make new things, obviously I made noise. This motorized noisemaker evolved. I used a motor at the center of it and tried a ton of different objects for it to strike as it spun, and I eventually built a frame. I attached wires to the PVC pipe frame, but they didn't make much noise when plucked. There are better materials to make string instruments out of. Plus, there was no resonating chamber to amplify the noise of the string. When the pop-up store finished its time there, I kept on thinking about how I could make an instrument with a spinning, plucking arm like the one I'd done, but that played strings well. I pondered and sketched and schemed and eventually came up with some ideas that I started prototyping. I started out with some of my favorite prototyping materials. Cardboard, skewers, rubber bands, hot glue, duct tape. The basic idea was a frame that held six string instruments on hinges with mechanisms behind them that I could manipulate to move them into or out of the way of the motorized plectrum arm, similar to what I had at the center of that noisemaker I'd done. Something important to my process that I would highly recommend when you're doing a large project, journal it. Write up what you did, what setbacks you had, what worked well, what you changed. I have pretty extensive notes about my month of building this, including sketches and photos. It was super helpful at the time, cathartic when things went wrong, and it's easy to go back now, even four years later, and remember the process. The shape of the sound chambers was partially based on sound, partially on visual aesthetic. I ultimately decided on a tapered trapezoid box. I used a scroll saw to cut it because that's what I had on hand. There are plenty of tools that could probably do a better job, but you use what you've got, right? I started by building the sound chambers with thick, cheap plywood from Home Depot and worked through several versions with increasingly better materials until I landed on a 1 8 inch Baltic birch ply from a local hardwood store that worked really nicely. The frame to hold these sound chambers got big really fast. I knew it was going to be big, and I told my friends that it was going to be big, but apparently I didn't properly prepare them because I got a lot of whoa when it started coming together. It is big. It has to be big to hold all six of these sound chambers and all the mechanisms to move them around. Speaking of which, to make these things move, I needed to create ball and socket joints, butt hinges, and I decided on a scotch yoke mechanism for each one so they could all be controlled with knobs from one side of the instrument by a single player. I made them from wood, both to match the aesthetic of the whole thing and for the challenge of recreating the mechanisms in wood. It's really fun, and I wouldn't have nearly the understanding now if I'd just purchased pre-made parts. That said, I did buy tuning pegs. That's a spot where I wanted machined consistency. I mounted the motor to the front with a pulley belt and a big ol' wooden gear, just for kicks, built the plectrum arm onto that gear with a guitar pick at the end, and we're off. I got some field testing in the form of people playing with it at the 2014 Bay Area Maker Fair. <laughs> This is a great time to see what things are sturdy enough and what are not. I had to tie the thing to the chain link fence behind our booth to make sure it didn't fall over. Later, I added a better stand. After Maker Fair was over, I made a few more modifications, like making the belt driving the plectrum arm a little bit tighter. It kept getting stuck on the strings. Revamping the connectors on the scotch yoke mechanisms. They kept falling off. And adding a friction stop to the bottom chamber to counteract gravity. In the end, it was over three feet tall and a bit unwieldy. With a hollow space in the center of the back, it turns out that carrying it on your head is the easiest way by far. It prompts a lot of nice hat comments. So that's my first hexachord. I'm really proud of having completed this huge project and doing something that size makes it easier to believe that you can go bigger. I learned a ton trying and failing and trying again. Next week, I'll talk about my second hexachord, a single chamber, 12-string affair, powered by servos and Arduino.
which was a whole different set of construction challenges and for which I expanded my tool experience a lot. If you like this, share it with a friend. If you didn't, share it with an enemy. I just love the sharing of ideas. Guess the maker movement's the right spot for it. Let me know in the comments what instruments you play and if you've made any of your own. I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Make sure to take a look at some of my other builds and how-tos. There are a lot of them. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you click the little bell, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. If you'd like to get videos a little early and support my channel, you can visit my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.